Hi everybody, uh, it's Drew of Drucifer's Theocracy. <clears throat> um, I chose today's topic over the fact I have something happening in my life uh, that is going on right now. Um, yesterday I lost a friend to this disease and um, the stages of grief, oh my god, I've zigzagged all over them from disbelief, um, to depression, to anger, and all the way back to, you know, everything. You know, you can't really bargain that's after a person's dead, but that is a part of the grieving process. But um, it made me feel really scared for myself. Um, he OD'd, and he's gone. And it makes me fearful that that's the life legacy I'm going to live for my friends and family. Um, I know I'm doing all the right things, um, but still that survivor's guilt is really getting me. Like, you know, um, not to tell his business, I'm not going to share his name, um, but he has children, you know, and they get to grow up now without their father. And like, I've done nothing with my life. And I feel like if anybody should have been taken, it should have been a POS like me over over someone like him. And so it just breaks my heart. Like my heart is shattered into a million pieces right now. And um, I think I'm back into disbelief that it's real uh, in the grief. But I've had some very wise words said to me by some people, you know, um, as tragic as it is that someone has, that you know has died, um, at least you knew them. Imagine if you had never met that person and you never got to experience them at their best. You know, um, it's always easy to get stuck in the sadness of them departing, but you can always remember the good times. You know, I... I post some pretty risque stuff to my Facebook page and there are some of you who follow me on here who are my Facebook friends and you can attest in the comments um, that yes, I post some pretty crazy stuff and um, this friend, uh, he would always um, comment on the, like the craziest one and be like, dude, I can't believe you posted that. That's so awesome. I wish I had the balls to do it, you know, and it always made me feel so good and I don't know why. Um, it, when people post stuff like that, why it does. I mean, some of it's a little bit ego. I, I, I like to make people laugh. And so to get feedback that I'm making people laugh is, you know, none other, um, like none other in my book. Um, you know, it's almost as good as doing math, believe it or not, for me, making someone laugh. Um, you should see me at a 12 step meeting. It's like a comedy hour. Well, I don't talk for an hour, though. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm happy I knew him. I'm happy that he blessed my life and I blessed his. It's just hard to get over thinking, I wish I had known he was struggling like he was. The last time I talked to him was two days, well, it was technically three days ago now, but two days before he died. And, um, you know, I, I just said, I hope to see you sometime soon since I'm back in town and everything. And he, he said, most definitely. And we just never planned anything. And not that I could have saved him. But if anything, I just wish I could have seen him one last time. Giving him a hug, said I love you. So we don't get a second chance to say those things sometimes. So, you know, if there's someone you're holding a grudge against, um... You know, it's it's best to let bygones be, be bygones, water under the bridge, all that. You know, I have um, a hard relationship, well, had a hard relationship with my parents and some of my siblings. And um, I've learned to just let it go. My parents are going to be as my parents be. My siblings are going to be as my siblings be. And, you know, and it's all a result of things that I've done. Now, there was someone that I had a grudge against, and I found out 
a few days ago that she had OD'd back in November. And so that amends that I need to make to her is going to be a little bit different than I had expected. I was, you know, I, don't, I, I didn't have expectations on the amends once I got to that, that part of the steps, but I was going to be able to hold my head up high knowing that I had cleaned my side of the street of that situation. And now I, I'm going to write a letter telling her how I felt about how I treated her, what I did, and even how much I miss her. So it's going to, release what it needs to release, I guess my sponsor said, but you know, if there's someone that you know who is no longer with us and you just can't get over the fact that they're gone, you can always write them a letter, read it out loud. And then my sponsor says burn it, but I think that's probably because in my case, um, it was for someone that was doing an amends and there might be stuff that I don't want people to read um, or people to find accidentally. But I'm not some aficionado on dealing with death. Um, it's just a part of life and recovery. You know, I did some shopping therapy already. And that was bad, but I spent way more than I should have on some clothes for the, for the funeral. Because um, when I moved here, I didn't think to grab my, you know, dark clothes that are, you know, nice looking. I brought a bunch of tank tops because I was in California and then I threw in some random stuff um, that I didn't even think about. And um, so my clothes selection here is pretty grim, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm thankful that I'm alive today to have those mismatched um, closet of clothes. And, um, you know, I, um, I'm thankful I know the both of them. I'm really grateful for that. Um, you know, and the best thing that we can do to honor someone's memory is by living. I was told that too. The best thing that you can do to honor someone who has gone on, be it from addiction, cancer, other health problems, um, just live for them because they can't do it anymore. Ooh, I'm gonna make myself start to cry. Okay, um, but I didn't wanna make this a crazy long video because I, I actually have some stuff I'm supposed to do today, which is um, so abnormal, but I start my new job tomorrow and um, I already have to tell them I'm gonna have to miss part of work um, on the day of the funeral, whenever that is, which I assume is going to be this week or next week. So that's something, you know, I've never really dealt with getting, um, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. Whenever someone dies and you, um, get like off work with that, that something leave, I can't remember, but, um, I have, no excuse to go out and use or drink. I haven't had the urge to use or drink because I stayed connected to people. I didn't isolate. I didn't just sit in the dark alone and cry, as my sponsor said uh, in a Facebook post about about um, about my friend. Um, he said some really good stuff. Some of it I've relayed to you, some of it I'll let him be the author of. Um, but basically, like he said, you just gotta live. They would want you to. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this now and thank you for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe, um, share with your friends and I'm gonna start naming my videos better stuff so people slip along them by accident and get hooked. So, are you hooked? Not on drugs and alcohol. I mean, you probably were at one time if you accidentally found this video, but anyways. Um, look back through some of my old videos and see how crazy I used to be and then see me now and be like, whoa. 
Yeah, he was on drugs. <laughs> All right. Thank you for stopping by. Y'all have a great day. And like I said, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.